Joining me now is Chris Fenton. He's the author of the book, Feeding the Dragon. Chris, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, what do you make of this incentive program uh, by the government? Is it enough to keep theaters afloat and the movie industry in China afloat? Well, look, when Beijing puts its mind to something and wants to change consumer activity, they're very good at that. I think this is an incentive that's going to work. Um, quite frankly, it has to. I mean, you're approaching 80,000 screens nationwide, and they need to fill seats. And a lot of those theaters are the cornerstones of major real estate developments over there. So they really need a thriving and healthy movie business. Right. And this kind of dovetails to the end of the summer movie season, August now until October. China was actually the global box office leader last year. But um, as you know, we've seen this drop off in 2022. Is it mostly because of the COVID restrictions going on and off? And are movie theaters, are movie goers rather, wanting to go to the theaters? Is there demand? Well, look, a big part of it is definitely COVID restrictions. I mean, Chinese box office was on a trajectory to overtake the U.S. box office in 2019, somewhere probably around now. Um, you're looking at 11 billion plus in the U.S. China was looking to overtake that. Um, then COVID hit, and that obviously created huge restrictions globally in all theater markets. So we did see that drop off um, quite drastically. And on top of it, we're starting to see that pent up demand start to bring back moviegoers. And this incentive that Beijing's put out there is really going to help push that and amplify it. But to date, we're still at what, roughly three and a half billion U.S. box office. So it's got a long way to go to catch up to where they were at pre-pandemic levels. We're seeing fewer Hollywood movies in China. Are these markets, uh, the Chinese market and the U.S. market, are they as reliant on each other as they were before? They're absolutely not as reliant on each other. In fact, I would argue that the Chinese consumer has lost a bit of taste for the U.S. films, mainly because their market has gotten to become um, at an elevated level and is providing really relevant plots and storylines. On top of that, the tension between the two superpowers is really creating a bit of resentment for the Chinese consumer towards anything American. And quite frankly, the American Hollywood market has stopped brand integrating China and China elements into the films to make them more relevant to China for various reasons. Um, so you're seeing sort of a confluence events cause less of a box office attraction for Hollywood films. And Chris, looking ahead, when do you see a full recovery when it comes to the movie industry? What do you think 2023 will bring? Well, I think globally what you're seeing is a huge demand for what I call super premium content, which is the major motion pictures made out of Hollywood. And for some, some part of the equation, China also. I think you're going to see a theatrical box office get back to pre-pandemic levels, but I doubt you're really going to see a huge growth trajectory outside of China. You're going to see a lot of that growth occur within the streaming model itself. That's become a very vibrant business and a great home for huge blockbuster films. Great to hear that. Chris Fenton, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your take. Thanks for having me.